Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Ninos and this is the series of guides and tutorials here on YouTube that uh, helps to shed some lights on new concepts, old concepts, new takes, new designs, and hopefully inspire and uh, educate you maybe on some new cool things that you can do in this, uh, this old game of ours. In this episode, I am going to do something that uh, may be obvious to a lot of you, but also may not be obvious to uh, to a lot of you. And uh, this came from my Twitch chat, and I'm also therefore using my Twitch Twitch base. So if you want to see how this, uh, let's say, budding uh, mega base is coming along, then there is a link in the description below on when and where I am streaming. So that would be also awesome to uh, see you there as well. Anyway, uh, the idea of this, or why I'm choosing this base, is because uh, it's a big base. I'm up here. And I need to go trains out here to build some cool things. And let's say I'm in a position where I want to say, oh, this iron build here, that's pretty cool. I wish I could get one more of those. That would be super nice. Just copy and paste it right there. And if you're going like, oh, those are some cool designs. Well, they might be coming to, uh, to a blueprint repository near you in the not too distant future. So stay tuned. And here we are. So now, well, what are we going to do about it? Well, usually you would have to take a train and go in there and fill it up and build yourself or get some kind of other thing. This is just a built big smelting array, so nothing fancy about it. Well, it's actually kind of fancy. But there is another way that you can do it, and that's what I want to show you because that's super awesome. And it may be like super easy and, and logical for you, and maybe you've been doing this like forever and ever, but I think this is pretty damn amazing. Here comes the building buddies. Look how quick they build. There's no time lapse or anything. This is just the speed that they're building at. Now, the one thing though is that they don't charge very well. So by the time they've, they've done all of this, then they're gonna be spending a lot of time charging, but who cares? I just built all of this in, I don't know, 10 seconds or something. And you can see here how they're they're building it. So what this is, this is a Spider-Tron army. Let's have a look. And I control the army by just controlling a single one, the leader. You can see here so there are a few things i want to show you about this but first let's just show how easy we can build the entire thing here and uh, let's uh, move it just around while i just uh, talk about what this is so you can see here there are five spartans you can have as many as you like but i found that it, there's definitely a matter of diminishing returns as you get more and more in here and five seems to be a really good number so one leader and four followers that seems good and there we go. That's how easy it is to build. Okay, well, maybe that one also needs to be built. And that one. So this is now built. And I can, uh, it will, because the way it's set up, it'll actually start working by itself. So what is actually going on here? Uh, let's have a look at how this works from a configuration perspective. So I've now jumped down here to the spider strands. So let's look at the configuration and how I control these. In the configuration, I have a trunk full of junk. I have a grid. This is how I set up my grid. The point of this is they need a lot of reactors and they need a lot of robot ports. They don't need to be super fast, but I also can't stand them being just as slow as they are. So they get one set of exoskeletons, one extra set of legs, and that's just the way it is. You can configure it as you as you like, but this is how I have chosen to do it. And I find it's working quite well. You could see how fast I could build this, but also because I don't have more batteries, they're going to run out when they build uh, this one uh, as a, a build such as that. Now, inventory-wise, they can't build much bigger than that either without coming back to resupply. The one thing here, enable logistics while moving, is super important because if you don't have that, they have to stand still, wait a second, and then the robots will fire it. And that's just too slow. So click this one, make sure that's enabled, and then they work fine. In here, by the logistics, well, you request all the things that you need to get, like all of these things, all the things that you think is necessary for a building. On top of that, I would highly recommend getting, make sure that you of course request some robots. So if they lose some for whatever reason, and also repair packs, that's always nice to have. Then take these things that you don't want and make sure you set them to zero. So when they go into a new location and they start cleaning up a, a forest, which they're also very good at, by the way, then they will go into the, okay, well, I'm also pretty good at it, I guess, since I was next to us. And let me go back here. Then it goes into the trash lot. So when they come back into your main logistics area, then they will be that'll be emptied automatically. I've also had to deconstruct some other bills and they ended up with a lot of this junk in the inventory. So I had to set these to zero. Quite easy. What you can do is you can make changes and you can copy between the different ones. 
with the usual. Let's say I want to also make sure that it has zero iron for whatever reason, right? So I change this one and I can then copy with shift right click and paste with shift left click. And now this one also has it. This one does not have it, but if I copy and paste, then this one has it as well. Now, the next thing is, how do you make them all follow the leader? There we go. This is done by, and I should be able to, first we need to take one of these Spidertron remotes and then I hold shift and right click to reset it. Now it's not linked to anything, so I link it to one and then I can move it out. Then I unclick it, reset it with shift right click there and shift right click. So when I want them to follow, then I pair it and then I hold control and click on an entity. I can also click control and, and target it to myself if you want to have some bodyguards or in this case, I'm going to control click here. Deselect, control click, De deselect, pair, follow. Deselect, pair, and follow. And then lastly, we take the leader, and that's the one we're we are follow we are controlling. And the way that it works is that you can then send them out to wherever you want and then bring them back. In this case, I have my main logistics area here. So just send it back here, and then my house robots will take care of uh, cleaning up their inventory and move and resupplying them up to, to the limit. Be please be aware that if you have more then they're going to take more resources such as if you give them 100 modules each then right now you have uh, 500 of each type of module in this pile here and doubling is doubling well obviously so maybe depending on where you are you're sort of in your base you might sort of not want to have this many modules just uh, stuck in a single in a single location so that's something to to consider as well but there's also another feature. Now let's look at this awful uh, place and I'm gonna take a blueprint that I have here. This is just a blueprint of landfill. So I wanna fill this up with landfill. If only there was an easy way to fill in landfill. Ah, man, that would be so nice, wouldn't it? Let's see if uh, we can come up with a solution because solutions are great. Here we go. Hello, Spidertrons. Look at that, look at that. My green army Spidertrons are full of landfill. And granted, of course, they are going to be spending a lot of their time charging because landfills is pretty intense on uh, how many entities you need to throw out. But as you can see, they are just mowing through this area with landfill pretty damn efficiently until they get stuck, of course. <laughs> there. And if I build another one up here, then they'll still go out. And this is pretty damn cool. The one that... One, the, the, Part I've done about this one is uh, that these are going to be recharged at another location. Can I build it? I can build that one. Yep. So these will, instead of going back home, actually, I will go, go to a dedicated landfill location because mo most likely you're not actually, or you will have in, a, in the later stages of your bases, you will have landfill out there in the world in different locations. And that's uh, then it's actually super beneficial that you can, instead of going home to your main base, you can actually go to another location where you have all the landfill produced and then you don't need to go back to the main base or transport them any further. So let's uh, just fill this area in because that's always looking nice. I want to show that. So what what I just did was that's actually four city blocks. Well, maybe a bit less. Maybe let's let's call it three city blocks full uh, of, of this. And you can see they they're starting to lose the charge because they can't keep up. But I wanted to make sure that all of the drones here or all of the all of them were being used as much as possible here. And then we get the last bits here. So once this is done, then we need to say, how do we actually replenish the supplies for these? That's a lot of, of commands out here waiting. Let's wait for that one to be done. And with this area being done, we can send it back. And what I have is out here, what I do generally is I find a nice little stone location. I mine it in, I build some, build some landfill here and go in here, fill up a train usually. But actually, if I don't build a train, I can also just go like this. And if you can see here, I have 2000 logistic spots in this area. And as we, this one gets closer, you will see that, okay, well, that's nice of you to actually start building this. But as they get in here, you will see an absolute flurry of attack. These are now set to logistics chests. And here they come. 
and they will just fill up all of the stuff that we need here and that's it that's how quickly they are filled up and then go back out here to continue the work they are built really simple they're requesting six thousand each so that was how quickly we filled up and uh, let's call it about 24,000, 25,000 maybe. It probably wasn't using all of it. And uh, that the last part is, how do you actually support this? Well, I did uh, provide a robot port. No, a robot, a Spider-Tron build thing, not a, a bit, some time ago. I don't know, maybe half a year ago. And it was kind of a bit quirky because this is sort of a little build that you build and then can take care of building Spider-Trons. And at the time I was like, yeah, well, do you really need to build a Spider-Tron every five minutes? You probably don't, but it's actually really nice to have a location that automatically builds Spider-Trons, bring stuff in from the bus when you're still having a bus base, and then have it built to Spider-Trons. And uh, whether you want to make it one or five, then I have some other locations out here that makes batteries, rubber ports, shields, and also this part is taking care of making the power, the fusion powers and the legs. So we have all the things we need. And if we want another spider sound, we simply just grab it from here, put in the, the stuff, should you lose one or if you just want to supplement your army. So this is a, this robot rush. No, that's not a robot rush. This spider sound build is actually more useful than that it seems because you can actually quite easily supplement your robot po ro your Spider-Tron army. And I'm going to be using my Spider-Tron army quite a lot more in the future because that's uh, just a super nice way of doing it. So there you have it. That is how we do it. Uh, also, I'll just mention that this mod that I'm using here, this is the Car Finder, also made by uh, Jeff S from the community. And it's really nice, especially when you have a lot of Spider-Trons and you kind of don't know where they are, then you just uh, shift V. And if you have the controller in hand, you will get exactly go there. Or if you don't have anything in hand, you'll get a list of all your Spider-Trons and you can click on the location of them and figure out where they are. But generally what I use is I shift click and then I I get, I've zoomed directly to it. That is super nice. And it also works very much. It's it's very complimentary to what we're what we're doing here with having a Spider-Tron army. It's really nice to be able to say, okay, where's my uh, defensive Spider-Tron? Okay, it's out there. Where's my other defensive one? Oh, it's uh, about to head out. Where are my uh, building buddies? They're here and the landfill buddies and then the building buddies here. So that is just uh, one more thing that I would recommend doing. So I hope you found this to be useful. It's a short one and I it's something that has really just... I've tested it over the last couple of weeks and I'm really happy with how well it works and it's so much easier and especially if someone decides to drop bombs on uh, on my base then it's nice to have, to send out the spider tons instead of uh, being on site myself. Thank you very much for watching. If you find this to be useful then be sure to like the video, subscribe if you want to and if you uh, feel like supporting the channel then I have a Patreon link in the description below and uh, I really appreciate all the people who are supporting me on Patreon and helping this channel to continue to grow and prosper. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Until then, take care and stay effective.